Welcome, my darlings. I've missed you, and I promise I'll never desert you again. Well, anyway, we're here, gonna do, we're here and we are going to be doing, well, a Michelangelo type of art. Uh, I got this from the 16th Chapel before, a long, kind of like a while back ago when my shows were a little younger, or my earlier shows. Uh, I did one on a lady, so now we're going to do one on a gentleman, on the male physique. And uh, it's inspired in one of Michelangelo's uh, pieces or a detail from the 16th Chapel. Out at, um, I think it's El Vaticano, the Vatican, that's where they have the 16th Chapel. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, um, I already did the drawing, so we're not going to go with the drawing. It's already set, already done in charcoal and set, so we're just going to continue. Uh, as you can see, in our, um, this is not our commercial canvas, folks. This is our normal um, canvas that you buy naked, virgin, 100% uh, cotton canvas, and then um, you get your, um, you glue it on, you know, with that white glue. Uh, you know, that school glue, and you just prime it and then let it dry, and then you do your charcoal drawing over that. Okay, uh, so let's begin by putting in the color that we want to put in. Uh, first of all, we're going to kind of generalize, and let's, let's look first at the colors that we're using. So here we go with the colors that we're using. The colors, oh, well, you know, they can't really get close to this, but okay. Uh, thallow green, ver vermilion hue, burnt umber, burnt sienna as the skin mostly, okay, ultramarine blue for any effects of blue that we need, permanent magenta, candium yellow light, uh, burnt umber I mentioned to you. But those are the ones that I use, the colors that I recommend. All right. Now today, we're not really going to focus too much on the palette because it is a complicated painting in a sense. There's a lot that goes into it. So I'm, I'm going to be putting a little bit of permanent magenta first and of course our burnt sienna. We're doing the skin. Okay. My dear, my darlings, let me tell you. It doesn't get any better than this when it comes to really, when it comes to painting because with this type of acrylic paint, see I've been doing acrylic since I was a kid, like about 12. And uh, I've been always messing around with it. And I discovered charcoal when I went into the art school. And uh, suddenly I started to unite charcoal with acrylic paint. And I did that fixing a charcoal drawing on the canvas. And what I mean, what I mean by fixing it you make your, you do your charcoal drawing and then you spray it with a spray fix. Okay, here we go. I'm using a good amount of water. Now, I'm, I'm using that um, permanent magenta, a violet color, because I want a violet tone in some of the shadows as an undershadow. I got to keep, this is like doing watercolor, I got to keep moist on here. Now, it set wonderfully, uh, the charcoal, I mean, you know, it stuck on there with that, with the um, charcoal spray that keeps it on there so the particles won't move anywhere. As I am glazing is what I'm doing, I'm glazing. My darlings, I'm glazing. Okay. Oh dear, 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 dear. Oh, want to thank those wonderful people calling my voicemail. The number is 4702659. It'll appear at the end of the show anyway, but uh, they're saying just wonderful things. <laughs> that they like the show, that it's a wonderful show. And then the other day, I was at the bus stop on my way to work. And these little girls, and maybe I think they were 13-year-olds, I'm not sure. Uh, I was wearing these dark sunglasses and, you know, and they say, are you an artist? And do I know Michael Flood? 
And I think they're friends with Michael Flood. I don't know if they, they're fans of Michael Flood, um, but Michael Flood at the present, thank you, Michael, is directing my show. And uh, I have not commented this to Michael as of yet, but these little girls asked me if I know Michael Flood. And I said, yes, you know, um, I'm Tali. I have the television program. And um, they were so sweet to say that uh, you're, you're a star. <laughs> I'm a star, you know. They tell me this. And, and I, you know, I, I think it was just wonderful that, I mean, what a nice compliment. Of course, I'm always uh, wondering. I mean, people, you wonder well, what is, what is considered that title. I don't know why they would say that. I guess, you know, they're young and young children. They see somebody on TV and whatever. But I enjoyed that. That was very refreshing, very nice of them. Whoever they are and they're watching my show, I say hello, give me a call in the voicemail and, and whatever. I all my friends that tune in. Um, see, here we are kind of red right there, kind of rosy, but that's okay. We just put a little bit of the darker tone. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just having the habit of getting more color into, into these things now. Okay, and then the ear. Here we go. See how wonderful it's coming out? Your charcoal drawing is perfect. It has not been interrupted. It's working out very well during this glaze effect. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the pinky color there is like maybe a spotlight that's pink, kind of like some lighting hitting it up like that on the, <clears throat> on the architecture of the anatomy here. I want to also recommend you folks that are interested in the arts or, you know, you want to um, practice. Um, Michelangelo, look at all his drawings. Um, especially the ones that are in the 16th chapel. Uh, they renovated them. They're nice and clean. Uh, you look at them and practice anatomy from looking at them. Uh, the artist, this genius, already uh, solved half of the problem for you. He dissected for you the, the visual anatomy so that when you're practicing an, one of his pieces from it, like as I did with this one, you will exercise and learn about the anatomy, about, ma about doing anatomy, which is very important, you know, if you're interested in, in um, doing anatomy, anatomic work, you know, if you're interested in painting the anatomy. Okay, here we go. I mixed... Um, to get the hair, I mixed a little bit of blue with that brown, with the burnt sienna, a little bit of an ultramarine blue with the burnt sienna. Oh, this is coming out so wonderful. It has that fresco effect for some reason. I don't know why. Life is a miracle. We all come, we all come to this world from, I mean, you know, it's magic that brings us here, I believe. A little bit of soft music and wine can help. <laughs> oh, God. I had some really good jokes lined up for you guys. I just can't think of anything right now. I guess I'm in a good mood. Maybe I'm funnier when I'm mad. Oh. Uh, well, I changed jobs. I'm not working at that, at this other, this place that begins with the word glamour. Uh, just want to recommend to all you folks: never go to a place with that has a company that has that begins with the word glamour. Please, never do. Working for a nice department store right now. Uh, 
I don't think I can mention the name, but this is public access TV. I mean, I'm not like... Anyway, I, I'm okay there. It's all right. I mean... Oh, one thing I want to tell you guys. Um, do you know the um, National Endowment for the Art, the president of the National Endowment for the Art? Let me see how much time I got. I got to really rush this one. Maybe I got like 15 minutes. I don't know. I'm kind of like on osmosis thinking like, I better hurry up on this. Got a gut feeling. Well, she's going to come to town, and I got to really do. I'm going to see if I can get the opportunity to talk to her because it's just not fair. You know, um, I don't think that the money is going to the people that really need it. You know, um, I actually saw how the judges only, uh, judges would, three judges would see 15 minutes of somebody plucking a dead parakeet and give it $5,000 for heaven's sakes. That's how they knew. They didn't know this guy from Adam. Oh. So anyway. I do believe that the, the public itself, you know, it, look, they knew Michelangelo everywhere around town, over there in Florence, wherever he went. The artists were big stars. You know, it was by demand of public why they got the best, got to do the best art, for heaven's sakes. So why? We pay tax money? Why can't we, you know, the tax-paying people, why can't they select the art they want to see? You know, it's not fair. You know, they saw, they thought that this show for him, this show was a par a, a paradigm. I mean, a paradigm, a satire. My show. Well, because of being very upset that day, because my show was uh, confused and stuff, I became more spontaneous, and now the show is even bigger. It's even a better show. Like you know, I'm not even worried about if the camera angles are fine or anything like that. This is a visit with an artist, a real artist, with a temperament. And I like getting mad on my show. But when the painting's getting along pretty well, I become the happy artist. <laughs> I gotta hurry up. I've been messing around, goofing up. Let me get this, get this, get this. Max, Max! Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Oh my God. What happened? What happened to the Botticelli's? What happened to the Leonardo's? The Raphael's? Oh God, hold on. This thing's gonna fall off. Wait, wait a minute, minute. <laughs> I had that, I had that rehearsed. The Botticelli's, the Leonardo's, the Raphael's, the Michelangelo's. Wait, Michelangelo was Botticelli. The Leonardo's, Raphael's. Well, anyway, they took the idols and smashed them. And what do we have now? A bunch of nobodies. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Andale, 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 arriba, 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 hija, 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 come on, come on, come on, hurry up. Oh, God. I don't like to be rushed, darling. Uh, I need a bigger, I need a fatter brush, big fat brush. Okay. Pain, pain, I hate these backgrounds, they just, wa they just are a waste of time. Okay, 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 okay. Finally, when will this be finished? Okay, we got some background there. Now, we will start to create the dermis with white. The dermis is the skin. For all you sweethearts that don't have such a high vocabulary, it's the skin. Uh, like dermatologist. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, the dermis, we are painting the dermis. Need a little bit of yellow for that dermis because we do have yellow in yellow tone in that skin and we have to open these with our teeth for heaven's sakes. Anyway, what do I have? Like five minutes left? There's nobody here in the studio. I'm completely alone. All right.
What do we have? Five minutes? We probably do. I don't care. Wait a minute. I'll get this thing quick. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, the dermis. Here we go with the dermis. You know, I don't have my original Michelangelo to look at. I gave the magazine to the guys at the crew over there. So that's okay. I can do it. Um, okay, cheek bony. Get that cheek bone there? Mm-hmm, yes. Okay. Anyway, I already, I already got my lights set here. Okay. Adam's apple. Oh, th thanks. That's great. Look, I cannot complain. Huh? Okay, got the Adam's apple there. Lighting here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. And so, let's get the white of that eye. And you know, and Michelangelo was always like, being rushed. When are you going to finish this? And he would get so mad. Leave me alone. It'll be finished when I'm ready and all that. You know, he was really, really, really pressured with this. He didn't, he, he hated uh, to do this Capilla Sistina. He wanted to just get down with his marble and make that fabulous uh, David that he made. It is so, so beautiful. You know, I look at it, and when I was younger, I used to look more like it. But now that I'm getting older, I got to do like 20 push-ups a day in the morning. And I'm on vacation from push-ups. You know, it's been nice not having to do them. But it takes me like 20 minutes to think about it. Actually, five minutes to do them. Oh. Okay. Here we go. Okay. See how now I'm building light for that. Okay. Building light where I need the light. Wonderful. This is so wonderful. Oh, wonderful. I'm so happy. Oh, I can't go on with a scene. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm always quoting. I'm always quoting this Norma Desmond. I mean, if you guys ever go out to uh, Hollywood, I mean, you got to visit the Movie Land Wax Museum. Over there, you'll see. Actually, you know, Norma Desmond and the Sunset Boulevard, you know, the car, everything. And next door uh, to the Movie Land Wax Museum is uh, a museum about all the classics. And you'll see the Michelangelo made in, in you know, the, all the Michelangelo uh, sculptures made into wax uh, figures. And it is just absolutely delightful. And I haven't been there for quite a while. And I must go there again. I mean, oh, it is wonderful. You know, they're, they're, they're great artists down there in Tinseltown, and that's one of the most beautiful things that was done there. Okay. Um, need some creamy white with the browns coming in. Okay. You know, oils have the, uh, the, the ability to give you that um, creaminess, I mean that creaminess, but Acrylics is another story. <laughs> um, acrylics is it's just it's, it's another ball game. Uh, just some highlights on the hair. Yeah. He's an auburn type of some highlights there. Now, the original Michelangelo, uh, Capilla Sistina, this is uh, Adam receiving the, uh, the, uh, the touch of God. You know, it has his hair being blown by the wind because it's a scene. But in this version of mine, um, I am not, you know, it's, it's just natural hair. I mean, it's, it's like not being blown by the wind. It doesn't have that action going on. It's just a pose that I liked. Okay. Um, a little bit of color on those lips. A little bit of color on those lips. 
right there. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, okay, okay. Color on the tempo. Color on the tempo. Color here. Color here. Color right there. Color here. Okay, I'm on a roll. Suddenly, when I'm on a roll, I gotta go. And I had more jokes in my head, but I can't think of any of them. Any of them right now. Okay. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know I gotta go. Um, it's impossible to finish this in a half hour. It's just impossible. Okay. So we are going to sign the painting. And we will select a smaller brush for that um, and get some color here. And this is Tali's version of a Michelangelo. Okay. T A L I 95. All right. Um, I'm done. It's time for me to go. And. Um, well, as Norma Desmond would say, a big star would never say okie dokie. This is acrylic painting with Tali. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMeltz. <laughs>
Can you go out there? Hi, Tali. This is Ben Twynum. I just saw, I just saw your picture on with the um, flowers that you said were absolutely dreadful. I like them. Um, if you can, give, um, you know, send me anything about how to paint better. Hello, Tali. We were watching your show a while ago, and we love it. It is wonderful. You are you are so entertaining and, and such a wonderful painter. Uh, and it didn't really look anything like a Chagall when we saw it today. Uh, we have a band, and we play tonight at Victories, and we all were sitting there watching your show. We thought you might come and hang out with us. Uh, we play at Victories down on High Street tonight, so uh, give us a call. I think that's not good enough. Hello and welcome to another program of Painting with Tali, your art collection. Today we're going to do a Japanese rooster, the kind that grows these long, long tails. And I thought they have always were beautiful, and I made a few of those paintings mm, a couple of years back. So they've been sold, and I, I think they're, I don't know where they are. They're in different parts of the world. Anyway, but I made this one, and I wanted to, uh, to show you 
a little bit on the technique. I'm not going through a whole drawing lesson, but uh, I want you to know that this is just your charcoal and uh, your fixative spray, of course, your canvas board. And I'm using the canvas board that is uh, the one that Grombacher uh, furnished me with. Uh, they have one that's a triple coated canvas board. It's nice and rich, the texture of that one. So it's uh, by Grombacher. And of course, um, they furnished me with the Grombacher Mist and Workable Fixative, which is the only one that will do the Tali miracles. It's this one, darling. Okay, so I sprayed it with that. Now, what I want you to know is see how I made the textures of these feathers. That is all done by getting your kneaded rubber eraser and then uh, making it, molding it into a sharp edge and then coming down one time because it cleans it that first time. If you were to go again, it's going to dirty it because it picks up the pigment clean, virginly white, only the first stroke. The second stroke, it won't do that. So that's why you have to uh, knead it again, find the wedge again, and then do your second stroke to make a pure white line, as I will show you right now. Um, let me see. OK, what we need right here is more darkness on the chest. So I'm going to fill it in with my charcoal. More darkness on the chest here. This charcoal, has, this charcoal drawing has already been sprayed, so now the canvas has another texture. It will go into a richer way of being. And um, also, you can get a dry brush and blend wonderfully if you want to blend as we did so right now. That's the charcoal dry brush. You could almost paint your painting beforehand, the claro oscuro, the darks and lights, um, you know, before applying the paint. So the, plain, the paint application will be glazing technique. So let me show you what it does. Like, for example, if I want a little bit of shine there, see? Got it? And now I needed the rubber eraser again. And I got more shine. Let's say I want a little bit more shine on that side. You got to knead again, press, and then see, it's going to be doing that. As you practice at home, you'll get the hang of it. Okay, so now I didn't, you know, I, I, I'm not really sad. I mean, I'm not really, you know, going crazy right now, making a great, great thing. I'm not, you know, I, I'm with a rocket. Uh, tied onto my back trying to finish this in a half hour so that's the way it gets in a half hour show but as you can see I'm mixing I'm, I'm coloring a little bit more where I want more deepness and that's gonna come there and there okay um, wanna get a little bit of uh, brush in a little bit And then a little bit of more spray. Okay, I'm stop messing around with the drawing here. There we go. It's been done so far. That what we're doing. Oh, one thing that I want to know, I want that I want to tell you. The reason I was so happy with this composition, of course, I was inspired to paint one of these. I haven't painted one of these in a long, long time. Maybe about eight years. So look how it's doing this line, this line. This is going this way, this is going that way. We have an oval type of shape, almost like an egg. So when you, when you go to art school, when I was in art school, they taught us how to visualize and compose, like the Renaissance had that. that sometimes, you know, figurative painting, good figurative painting has science in it. And unfortunately, it's not recognized as far as the tax money is concerned and given the tax money to you know, you're, you're the people out there who like fine arts, who like figurative arts. Okay, you, they, from your taxes, they're not, they don't fund that. We don't even get to sit on the bus. I mean, not even the back of the bus. We don't get to ride on it at all. So, it's, so this is the era where figurative arts has been discriminated. So here we go. There we go. See, that is the shape. It's a perfect painting. Perfect. I composed perfectly. Like, for example, you have good, uh, like the Beatles. They were great composers. What they do? Music. So no, no, in arts you can put poop and they'll give it money. They'll fund it. What? A couple of four people there. 
that are the judges. Okay, let me shut up and finish this. It's got 21 minutes. Okay, let's put the background. Um, where are we? Where is that brush? Where did it go? Oh, here it is. So now, so now we have a background. See how I use these? Okay. Oh, I don't care. You can go over your branch. You can go over your branch. Okay. 20 minutes. Um, this is a hole. This is a hole. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to keep on fighting. I'm going to keep on bitching. Bitching. Because every time I go, I, when I see the art that is up there to be funded, you have a couple of judges looking at color. They see four color slides of your work. It's like four up on the screen. They take it off. Four more up on the screen. They take it off. I, I don't know. I think it was four sets of four. OK. And then on the screen, you will see beautiful figurative stuff. And that does not enter, that does not, by the judges, do not recognize that. <sighs> Our tax money in the arts has been seized by people who discriminate the Michelangelos and the Leonardo da Vinci's, the Botticelli's, the Raphael's. They took the idols and smashed them. And what do we have now? Bunch of nobodies. But thanks to public access television, which I think we should have more funding for, we're the stepchild of the city. We don't get enough money for better equipment. This show, my show, has reached technically the best we can do. Michael Flood and I have been on this for many years. He's been putting up a lot with me, that's for sure. Uh, but the thing is that we are very proud of how far we have gotten the quality of this show, considering the fact that we do not have uh, resources, technical, physical resources, to make it better. This is, I think, the best that I can do. I don't know if it's the best program produced here at the station. I get a lot of compliments out there in public that, you know, mine's the only show that they see in the station, but that's very nice. There are other good shows, too. Um, but uh, as far as I am concerned, uh, this is the best that we can do it, that I have been able to do it, and I've gotten the interest of other people and other stations uh, to recognize uh, the quality and they wouldn't believe w with, how, uh, with how modest resources we're able to do this. And there's money out there that the city can give us, and, we don't, and it's not given to us. And we're the stepchild of the city. We here have uh, access. Our access is non-discriminatory. So sure, they're not happy with the other people that do other shows here. OK, but that's a democracy. You can't agree. Everybody is, can't agree, but everybody has the right to be. Respect, respected and heard. So that's why I'm bitching. Because a democracy is where you have the right to bitch. Okay, I already put the background in there. And uh, uh, let me look at my rooster. Yeah, okay, let's, um, uh, first and foremost, let's get the greens, those beautiful greens. We got some beautiful greens. We got 16 minutes left. We got some beautiful greens. Okay, greens and some yellows, some yellows. And 
and some orange, uh, orange, uh, orange, 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 orange. A little bit of orange. Okay. Mm hmm. So before, when I used to do these paintings without the charcoal technique, as uh, for the TV show, for the TV program, I, I came up with charcoal techniques. And hold on a second, excuse me, honey. We have an area there that didn't get painted in. It's a background hole. There's a background hole. A hole. Okay. Too watery your paint, sweetie. Blot it right off, baby. More creamy the paint now. Okay. That's what we needed there. Okay, that's fine. And now we're coming. See, when you glaze, you got everything you need there. You already did your charo score. Your darks and lights are already in there. See? That's the wonderful thing about, uh, about this technique of painting. See how I went over and I just erased it? Or get your sponge clean. OK. So we can go back on it here. OK, we can clean out like that. Nothing like your hands. All right, um, if I want a yellow coming out more about it, I'll get another brush, get some fresh yellow. Uh-huh, one, one stroke up. It's doing it for me like that. And then stroke it down perfectly. Here we go, baby. OK. Okay, now let's see. Let's see for some fuchsia, fuchsia, fuchsia. Need some of that fuchsia? I thought it was fuchsia and I put down brown, honey. Hold on. Okay. Some fuchsia, baby. Some fuchsia coming here. We want some fuchsia, some purpleness and fuchsia about it. You know, rooster fuchsia, rooster purple. That's what we want. We got 13 minutes. Okay, see, we got that there. Now, 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 now. Um, super, super orange, super orange. Super orange for this area. Kind of like a super orange going up and then, uh-huh, more about it for that, uh-huh. Wait a minute, baby. Okay. Okay. And uh, greens, greens. Back to the greens, back to the greens. Greens and blues. There we go, honey. Look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. Squeeze it. Open. OK. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful, the transparency that you got? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now, some yellow kind of feather going up so we won't be too green around that area. And, 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 let's go with a purple feather, a purple type of feather there. Uh-huh. Looking good, looking good. Let's clean up, clean up. Um, let's make this feather yellowish. Uh-huh, wonderful, baby. And uh, these bluish to connect. Bluish to connect. Uh-huh. Uh, let's go for some purple. Purple's around here. Purple's around here. Okay. This one, let's go into a greenish, 
that's going to super, super green, 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 green. Green for that. Beautiful. Green right there, too. Green, blue. Let's go green, blue. Okay, now let's get some red about it, some orange about it. We haven't done much orange. Let's get some orange here happening. Here. Yellow here. Okay. Okay. A little bit of orange there. Okay, some green now. Some green. Green and blue happening behind it. Blue here. Okay. 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 Oh, beautiful. That's a big and bad rooster. All right, so now that branch. the branch okay we got the branch established and there's a little bit of branch up here uh-huh and now there is some green about those feathers that are here so I want to get those in there. And then there's some green about that chest. Some green and kind of like yellow too. So now let's get more yellow in it about that chest. Some yellow like that. Okay. Let's get the brown between the toes of the branch for it. Uh-huh. And some deeper green of chest here for it. What we're going to need. And that might be necessary. OK. Looks good, kind of. OK. Feathers, feathers, a little bit of orange, okay. About here a little bit. Uh-huh, and now that has to be yellow, super yellow. I want to go with another brush. We got to cut yellow, orange highlights there for that. So they do, yeah, it does have these little feathers. Okay, and um, this part, yeah, it has these orange, white, see? I use a little bit of orange, a little bit of yellow, but since I got my child scooter already established, it fills in beautifully immediately. So painting has never been this good, at least for me in, in my experience. Okay, we got six minutes. Okay, so we're doing fabulous. And now we need, of course, a mm, kind of like a red right now. Kind of like a red. So let's look for a red.
a little bit of red because of the face situation. Okay, very kind of dry a little bit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Five minutes. So... We will paint this up here. Okay. Isn't this fabulous? Okay. Okay. There we go. The head's already in there. I mean, the color is filtered in. And um, we have a kind of like a brown beak that we need to place on him. But more yellow about it. Right. Okay. Uh-huh. And then his feet, go a little bit of gray on those feet. Uh-huh. A little bit of gray. Yeah on his feet. And um, if you want to blot them, you'll lighten it up. Okay. Acrylics is like, when you want the effects, it's a matter of the moisture of the painting. So there's a lot of moisture control that goes on with it. Okay. Huh. And of course, we have three minutes. Um, those blossoms. Those blossoms. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Okay, the eye, the eye, the eye, the eye of the rooster. Let's make it yellow. And let's put a black dot in there. Okay. Uh, let's define here a little bit. Uh-huh. That's working well with that area there. We're defining the feather area. So after you have your, your basic glazes with your drawing, you can bring up, for example, with white, let's say these feathers up here, with white, because you already have a guideline. It's already been drawn for you in the charcoal technique using the kneaded rubber eraser and taking off the colors that you don't need. I mean, and, and you know, getting all the techniques with the kneaded rubber eraser is what I'm saying. So you have your charoscuro drawing. It's like a black and white photograph, and all you have to do is like filter the color into it. And then after filtering the color into it, then you can block. So when you block, what I'm saying blocking is that when you get the color white and yellow, in this case, because of those feathers, we want the feathers to show up some more. Okay, black, white and yellow. I'm mixing white and yellow to get, okay, a certain light color so that when I want to get see this white expressed a little more of yellow and white expression see I can go there 
See, now we're blocking, blocking the color. We're color putting on top of color. This is not a transparency. So now we're not doing transparency. Now we're bringing highlights through um, white coat of paint wash with the yellow to block over and bring higher light, higher light, higher light. So that's what's happening right now. See, in this type of painting where you do the figurative in your black and white, and then you can um, uh, do your blocking. For example, let's go deeper here. See, now we're blocking. This is, this is, this is a coat that's covering everything. It's not glaze it's transparencies. It's blocking, transpar it's, it's blocking, blocking it out. So that's the way we get what we want here and there. So see, that's what you do. Um, can't explain everything. But uh, that was, you just got to keep watching the Tali show because Tali can't tell you all everything he knows in a half hour. So, but he has to go right now. Got to sign this. We've got 17 seconds. T A L I 98. And you see, darlings, it's just going to be you, the canvas, the cameras and all you wonderful people out there in the suburbs. This is Tali signing off. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMilts.